I think one of the barriers that we experience is that patients are being seen as being biased or having interests. And that of course hinders the process because there's always an argument to claim that somebody is being influenced by anyone. But we need to rationalize that discussion because I think everybody has an interest. What I think is most important is to declare the interests and uh, then let patients and everyone actually participate in the process to bring their opinion in. That really helps a lot. Uh, so there's, there are barriers, but once you start engaging, once you start rubbing shoulders with the payers, the uh, regulatory bodies, you find one big lesson. They're very anxious to help you. They're very anxious to try to involve you. They are not dismissive. And I really found that encouraging. The biggest barrier from where I'm sitting in Ireland is, is education, you know, and that's, that's not just for the patient organisations, but it's for the regulator and the agencies themselves. You know, they need to be educated on why it's important to have patient involvement in HTAs. And again, that's the brilliance of UPATI coming at this time for, for Ireland and for, for all of the, the countries in the EU, because we need some help in terms of how we communicate that message to the HT agency so they reach out and bring the patients in in a systematic way. We have to communicate the value of patients being involved in the process to those regulators, to the governments, uh, to the decision makers. And on the other side of that coin, we also have to communicate that to the patient leaders, why they need to, why it's important for them to be involved in the HTA process. And I, I take that a step further why it's important for them to be involved in the medicines development process from, from the very beginning. Um, because I think pa patient-related outcomes is where patient organisations need to be at.